So it goes all the way from Chicago to the Pacific Ocean. And it was the only major road for years that people could get from any part of the United States to California. Route 66 was conceived in the 1920s after World War I. You have a man in Tulsa named Cyrus Avery and he proposed to the government the creation of building Route 66 in 1924. On November 11th, 1926, Route 66 becomes official. Speeding along the rolling highway, singing a song to the rhythm of the road. Life is a payday, oh it's a payday when you're speeding along to the rhythm of the road. Route 66, for anybody that had a car, really was the start of the connection to provide the freedom of movement for people of America. It was a road that was created at a pivotal time when, as I like to say, this country was between wars and on the wagon, the Roaring Twenties. My dad's sister lived out on Highway 66. I could sit there in the front yard and watch all these cars going by, just one after another, from everywhere in the United States, Illinois, New York, Kentucky, Arkansas, Missouri. They were all headed one place, and that was to sunny California, uh, looking, for the, looking for the treasure, looking for the rainbow. Every Sunday afternoon, my family would go north to see grandmother. And in those days, the traffic was terrific, particularly after World War II. And my mother was always horrified of all the 18 wheelers that would come by. She just knew it would be squashed like a bug one of these days. There's many people travel the road. You wouldn't be able to get 1,100 miles without having a head-on collision. I think all of us had to realize that something had to be done with our highways. We had outgrown Route 66. The problem was with capacity and safety. Men and women were traveling, the United States was booming. Home ownership was a big deal, and we had a big boom in the housing industry. When they built a house, they built a garage, and they put a car in that garage, and they wanted to be able to go. The car was no longer the play toy of the rich. Anyone could have one. So Route 66 could no longer handle that traffic. That's why President Eisenhower in 1956 who had become so enamored of superhighways when he was a general during World War II and saw the Autobahn, this sleek, efficient highway system in Germany, decided we're going to put all of our money, all of our energy, all of our technology into road construction. So the road construction businesses, the big oil companies, the big automobile companies had a heyday, and these interstates were built. And after that, business slowed down, and unless they had a really good local foundation for businesses, they had to close their stores. When the bypasses came in, if your town, your little place on the road didn't get an exit, you were in a real hurt. People had no way of getting to you. In some places, it was a very slow, horrible death. In some places, it was just like that. A lot of business owners held out as long as they could, um, but unfortunately people went bankrupt so they had to sell out. A lot of the little businesses along the road, you'd go in and there were cobwebs in the door and there was dust on the shelves and some businesses had closed. And there was just this sort of down feeling among a lot of people. Forty years ago that interstate down there didn't exist. Really? Yeah. Back then, cars came across the country a whole different way. How do you mean? Well, the road didn't cut through the land like that interstate. It moved with the land, you know, it rose, it fell, it curved. Many years ago, I was at my hideout out in Santa Fe, New Mexico, riding, and my wife got a hold of me and she said, you're gonna have to come up for air. She said, John Lasseter, um, out at Pixar really wants to talk to you. And he had this concept, and he said, I want to do a movie about this hotshot race car who's just full of himself, and he gets lost on an old road, and he comes to realize that it's okay to be a race car. That's great, but also it's great to sometimes slow down and get on a crooked road, you know? And of course, that's the story of cars. And he said, and the road we have to use is your road. I became their consultant and I helped them put the movie together by taking the creative teams where? Out on the road. And of course, I'm the sheriff. 
the high sheriff. <laughs> Boy, we ain't as dumb as you think we are. The whole mission of that movie was fulfilled in showing you what death by interstate can do. I think America is a very fast-paced society. We're all into drive throughs fast food, expedited shipping. When we want things, we want them now. No offense to Walgreens, but you know, a Walgreens in one town looks very similar to Walgreens in another town. But the local food and the local flavor and the local structures, you can only see in that town. And I think we miss a lot of what America is really all about when we don't go to the one-of-a-kind places anymore. When you go into a Route 66 high palace or a diner or a greasy spoon, there's a roll of the dice, there's a little adventure. You could get to a main poisoning or you might find the meatloaf platter you'd kill your mother for. Everybody here knows me. They, they call me Miss Shirley. And it's nice to be welcomed. It's nice to know that this is a good place to eat. Family environments. Everybody know everybody by the name. Welcome, warmness. We always talk about progress and how great progress is and is. Look at the strides we've made in my lifetime, in your lifetime, in medicine and technology. Look at me, I used to write on a typewriter when I was a young reporter. I mean, you know, can you imagine going back to a typewriter? It would be like going back to a quill. But sometimes with technology, we lose things. One of the things we lost with the interstate highways, with those changes, was what we call the front porch culture, where people used to sit on their front porches and, and talk to each other and wait for the newsboy and listen to the radio. And then what happened? We had progress, air conditioning came along, drove everybody inside the house, and then what did we do? We turned on the box, we turned on the tube. I don't want to give up air conditioning, I don't want to give up television, but we have to acknowledge that there's a trade-off. There's a scene in The Grapes of Wrath as they're packing up their truck to head west to California. They're going through all of their things and the car can only take so much weight and they're trying to figure out what it is that they're going to take. And the question that they give is, how will we know who we are without our past? Route 66 represents so many things to so many people. It was an opportunity for a new life. It was an opportunity to see a part of the world that you never thought you could. And it was an opportunity that brought people together. And if we lose that part of our history, we kind of forget a part of who we were. When we think of history, what do we think of? We think of old photographs letters, newspapers, you know, these documents of our past. But we walk around markers of our past every day in our historic structures. A structure is more than just bricks. It's more than just windows. It's more than just ceilings. It's the story. It's the story of those that occupied that structure, built that structure, worked in that structure. Route 66 is arguably the most famous highway in the world. So it has, and those of us who preserve it, have an obligation to tell those stories. The most important resource along Route 66, the most important resource of this nation, are its people. Route 66 is Steinbeck and Will Rogers and Woody Guthrie and Merle Haggard and Dorothea Lang and Mickey Mantle and Jack Kerouac. It's thousands of waitresses, service station attendants, fry cooks, truckers, grease monkeys, hustlers, state cops, record drivers, and motel clerks. Route 66 is a soldier thumbing home for Christmas, an oaky family still looking for a better life. It's a station wagon filled with kids wanting to know how far it is to Disneyland. A wailing ambulance fleeing a wreck on some lonely curve. It's yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Truly a road of phantoms and dreams. 66 is the romance of traveling the open highway. It winds from Chicago to LA. More than 2,000 miles all the way Get your kicks on Route 66 